Okay, during a game of totem tennis, the ball of mass, 150 grams. Oh, now by the way, sorry, you don't have this worked example in your book, so I've realised it hasn't printed for some reason. So I do apologise for that. You can just take your notes to the side or something. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure why this one didn't print. But the try yourself, I'll let you do in a second. Alright, so, during a game of totem tennis, the ball of mass, 150 grams, is swinging freely in a horizontal circular path. The cord is 1.5 metres long and is an angle of 60 degrees to the vertical, as shown in the diagram. Calculate the radius of the ball's circular path. So what we are looking for is that. That radius. It is just trigonometry. Yep, you're exactly right. So if we draw this out as a right-angled triangle, we have h is 1.5. We have the opposite is 60. So, yep, it's going to be sine 60 is equal to the opposite over 1.5. So, I'll call that radius, actually, rather than opposite. So, our radius is going to be equal to 1.5 times sine 60. Which will be 1.3, roughly. No, have I done something wrong? Are we happy with that? Alright, I'm not hearing any uh, dissent, so let's go with that. Okay, so this is just a simple trigonometry thing to find that radius. Next, draw and identify the forces acting on the ball at the instant shown in the diagram. Okay, so... There is our ball. Now, at the instant shown in the diagram, we have gravitational force acting on it. Mg. What else? Why isn't it falling down? Tension force. All right. So, our tension force is in the same direction as the line. And so, when we combine those two forces, we get a net force. Look at that into the centre of the circle. Okay, our net force is the same as our uh, centripetal force. Okay, so those two, that's where that net force comes from. Remember that the centripetal force has to be a real thing. And so the centripetal force in this case is made up of the horizontal component of the tension force. Okay, so that's it. That's it for part B. Those are the forces acting on our ball. All right. Okay, determine the net force that is acting on the ball at this time. Alright, so for anything in circular motion, our net force is equal to our centripetal force. Which is equal to mv squared on r. Now, are we given m? Oh, hang on. We are, but we are not given... Uh, we're not given speed. Oh, okay, so what we're going to have to do then is trigonometry again. Uh, are we? Yeah, we will. Okay, so if we look at the forces acting on our ball, we can do it that way. So we have our force of gravity downwards. We have uh, Ft... And we have F net. All right, and so we are going to have, what's our angle that way? So that will be 60 in there. 60? Yeah. <coughs> 60 degrees in there. We know FG, or we can work out FG. So Fg is equal to mg. What's the mass of our ball? 150 grams. 0.15 multiplied by 9.8, which is 1.47 newtons. So we have 1.47 newtons there. And the rest we can work out through trigonometry. Both C and D we can work out through trig. 
So we want the net force. So we have, what's that, our opposite and our adjacent. So tan 60 is going to be equal to F net on FG. So if we rearrange this, uh, we want F net. So <laughs> F net is going to be equal to 1.47 multiplied by tan 60. So we get 2.55 newtons as our net force. Okay, so that's our centripetal force. That's the force that's causing our ball to continue going around in a circle. All right, now we want to calculate the size of the tensile force in the chord. Well, we can do this in a couple of ways. We can either use trig or we can use pythag. We've got uh, a square. Oh, we've got a and b. We can work out c if we want to. Let's do it that way. So, our tension force squared is going to be equal to Fg squared plus F net squared, just from Pythagoras. So, 1.47 squared plus 2.55 <coughs> squared. Square root all of that to give us Ft. I get 2.94, 2.94 newtons. All right, any questions there? Okay, now you've seen how I do it, 